The Plurivac Plus Continuous Reinfusion Autotransfusion System is provided as a sterile single patient use unit with a non pyrogenic fluid path. It is used for the collection and reinfusion of autologous blood. To begin, activate the swivel floor stand at the bottom of the unit and lock it in place. Remove and discard the cap on the patient tube, which is present just for aseptic technique. Attach the patient long tube to the thoracic catheter. Note when this connection is made, the patient is protected from atmospheric air entry and can expel air through the one-way valve located in the Plurivac unit. Drainage, if any, will migrate into the collection chamber. A sterile, pre-filled, pre-measured syringe is enclosed. Remove the syringe. Remove the cap from the tip of the syringe. Insert the exposed tip into the injection site on top of the unit. Depress the plunger to insert entire contents. Once fluid is inserted, the water will turn blue. In case of gravity drainage, omit this step. Be sure the suction port is uncovered. If suction is prescribed, simply connect the suction tubing to the suction port on the Plurivac unit. Attach the other end of the suction tubing to the wall source. No fluid is required in the suction column. The unit is preset at minus 20 centimeters of water. If the prescription is for minus 10, 15, 30, or 40, rotate the red suction dial until the red stripe in the dial aligns with the prescribed level and clicks into place. Increase source suction until the orange float appears in the indicator window. The suction regulator and dial determine the amount of suction as long as the float is in the window. It is important to turn the regulator up until the orange float appears. If you do not see the float, continue to increase source suction wall until the float is in the window. If suction is prescribed, the float will appear and stay in the window as prescribed. If no suction is prescribed, gravity, there will be no float in the window. If suction is on, the word yes will appear in the negative pressure indicator window. If suction is off or gravity drainage, the indicator may intermittently indicate negative pressure in the window with patient respiration. The negative pressure indicator does not confirm drainage tube patency. Routinely check patency. If the air leak meter is filled, intermittent bubbling would indicate the presence of an air leak. No bubbling would indicate the lack of a patient air leak. Note, fluid may oscillate with breathing dynamics. If the clinician observes constant bubbling for extended time period after connection to suction source, troubleshoot to ensure there is no air leak at the connector or product site or along the patient tube. Patient drainage may cascade into the collection chamber, starting with the first column within the chamber. Check periodically to ensure adequate suction is being applied to the unit and that the orange float valve is in the suction indicator window. If the suction setting is decreased from a higher level to a lower level, patient negativity may remain at higher level unless negativity is reduced. Use the high negativity release valve to reduce pressure to desired level. The operation of the manual high negativity release valve is described in the safety valve section. The one-way valve provides the one-way seal which allows air to escape from the patient while retarding the reverse flow of air. Water is not required to establish the seal. The positive pressure valve opens automatically with increase in positive pressure, preventing pressure accumulation and a potential pneumothorax. It is next to the suction port and air will escape if there is an occlusion in the suction tubing. Do not obstruct the positive pressure relief valve. The automatic high negativity release valve is located in the rear center of the unit and will automatically open at approximately minus 50 centimeters of water, providing protection against excessive negative pressure buildup. The manual filtered high negativity relief valve is provided to manually vent excessive negative pressure. Note the fluid level in the small arm of the seal. Depress the high negativity valve to vent negative pressure. Filtered air will enter the unit and the fluid level in the seal will drop. 
release the button when the desired level of negativity is attained. Caution. If suction is not operative or is on gravity drainage, depressing the high negativity release valve can reduce negative pressure to zero, or atmosphere, with resulting possibility of a pneumothorax. The collection chamber has a capacity of 1,700 cc's and is calibrated in 10 cc increments to 50 cc's and then 50 cc's to capacity. The first section of the chamber is 1,050 cc's and if fluid exceeds that level, it will cascade into the second portion of collection chamber. Only blood collected in the first chamber is available for autotransfusion. Blood collected in the second compartment cannot be easily reinfused. Prepare the second unit according to setup instructions and place it next to the original Pluravac unit. Clamp the patient tube on the original Pluravac unit. Separate the red and blue connectors on the second Pluravac unit. Separate the red and blue connectors on the original Pluravac unit, keeping the original tubing from the red connector to the patient. Attach the blue connector of the second Pluravac unit to the red connector on the original patient tube. Open the clamp on the original patient tube. After noting the fluid level, discard the original Pluravac unit per hospital-approved aseptic guidelines. Rotate the red and blue connector to where connector is in the down or inverted position. Use a standard lure lock syringe for withdrawing samples. No needle is required. When wiring two thoracic catheters, remove the protective cap and straight connector on Pluravac tube and discard the cap. Insert the 3 8 inch sterile Y connector into the Pluravac patient tube. Obtain and insert two sterile small tubes to the Y connector. Note, Pluravac tubing may be used if no separate tubes are available. Attach a connector to each short tubing section. Attach two short tubing sections to the two thoracic catheters. Note, if two thoracic catheters are used, both must be attached to a Pluravac unit. Prepare two units per instructions. Obtain two short sections of one quarter inch tubing. Obtain a quarter inch Y connector and insert it into the two short suction tube lengths. Attach one section to each of the suction ports. Attach the quarter inch standard suction tubing to the Y connector. Increase wall suction source until the float is in each of the Pluravac indicator windows. Turn up suction source until this is achieved. Note, placing the Y connectors close to the Pluravac unit and decreasing standard suction tubing length will decrease dead space in the tubing and assist in elevating both floats. If both units are attached correctly and only one float elevates, the second unit without float is imposing negative pressure but not the setting on the dial. Increase source suction. When milking or stripping chest tubes, it is important to follow hospital policy. If chest tube stripping is performed, Milk the tube in short sections. Avoid flattening of tube in long sections, which can increase patient negative pressure. Note, stripping of the patient tube must be done with the patient tubing clamp open. Stripping with the clamps closed can result in the buildup of excessive positive pressure. Good technique is to keep unit upright and below catheter level. Do not tilt the unit to a parallel position. Use the handle on top of the unit to carry it. Do not use the two hangers on the side of unit to ambulate the patient. With suction on, continuous bubbling in the seal may indicate the presence of a disconnect. Check the connection of the catheter to the Pluravac unit. If bubbling persists, use a Pluravac clamp or hospital-provided clamp to clamp the patient tube from the catheter to the unit to see if the leak stops. If continuous bubbling persists, change the Pluravac unit as directed by the IFU. The fluid level in the water seal should cascade with the breathing cycle. If your observation does not detect movement, 
check to ensure tubing patency and patient condition. The Plurivac Sahara unit has built-in patient protection with the enclosed one-way valve to prevent atmospheric air entry when tipped over in any position, with or without fluid in the air leak meter, and with or without suction on. Only dry suction, one-way valve technology as found in the Plurivac Sahara system offers that protection. Note, fluid can cascade between the two sections of the collection chamber. To restore unit upright, note patient and fluid levels, and either replace the unit or continue use in accordance with hospital policy. Note, the S250 rapid transfer bag can be used with either the S1150-08LF or the A9250LF continuous reinfusion Plurivac system models. Note or mark the drainage level in the first compartment of the collection chamber. Obtain the red stopper and insert into the injection site. Remove the tethered cap from the end of the port tube extending from collection chamber. Remove the tethered cover from the spike port and transfer the bag and spike tube. Ensure that all clamps are open. Suspend the transfer bag below the exit port of the unit if possible. It is recommended that you hang the Plurivac unit from the bed rail. Activate the handle 90 degrees to activate the springs in the handles. Note the drainage flow. When complete, i.e. when there is air in the tube, clamp both clamps. Remove the transfer bag from the Plurivac unit and reattach both protective covers. Remove the handle on the S250 by gently pulling toward original area of the handle. Remove the handle. Refer to the instruction for use for reinfusion instructions.